Let's go hunt cars in Mexico with my friend, Michael Lightborn. No, no possum maverick. Camaro? Yes. It, it ran for 10 years, it's been none running for 30 years, and that's going to start running probably next year. Pepe Flores and the Rod Iron VW Bug. Yo voy a cantar esta canción, yo voy a cantar esta canción para mi gente. Con una pasión. You're going to have to walk through all the chickens to get to the cars. You got pay? Yeah. How much? Three dollars and fifty cents. And then coming back, it's a dollar fifty. Thank you. She's waving at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. What are these guys doing over here? Wiping are selling vessels to dollars right now. They're buying it. 1970. 19.7 pesos per dollar. Yes. When we got to Chewy's shop in Juarez, Cesar jumped on the phone to set up a time to see the three 1968 Camaros that had been stored for over 25 years. Yeah, you're going to have to walk through a bunch of, uh, uh -huh. of uh, cockfighting uh, the, the roosters to uh -huh. get to the cars. Really? I told him, you like, you like <laughs> yeah. chickens. <laughs> yeah. So Michael couldn't wait to kid me about the cockfighting roosters we'd have to wade through to get to the Camaro. Cesar? You close? Yes. Aquí. Of course, he wasn't really kidding, but... When I was a kid, my older brother and I took care of 550 chickens on my grandmother's farm in Pennsylvania. We'd feed and water them before the school bus picked us up in the morning. So I knew chickens. <laughs> so what treasure lay behind that sliding door? <laughs> well, this right here. Come as a big surprise. Of course, who knows what it was originally. Until you decode that trim tag, you don't really know what it used to be. Okay. Man, almost took me down. <laughs> so I backed out of that little side garage and looked back on those the Mustangs back there. Chicken jumped out of one of them, followed mock it up to the next Camaro. Okay, next up another 68. <laughs> this one looked a little bit more complete. Michael couldn't get the door handle open. I guess he didn't have quite the leverage on it. So Corretto got it open. The interior looked pretty complete and original. Right down to that shifter for what must have been a power glide two-speed automatic. 
I thought it was kind of funny when we spotted that air freshener hanging from the rear view mirror. Pretty cool. Short bed for this pretty nice shot. Yeah. Did you try and get the VIN tag in that white? Not mirror? the white one. It's, uh, that's a 68, you can't tell it. Then we turned into it's another room. room and... <laughs> <laughs> you know, some chicken. Those are fighting roosters. Really? Yeah. Cockfighting is as much a part of Mexican culture as bullfighting. And beyond those cages, that last Camaro was sitting on a floor that was above a basement. Well, I didn't have high expectations, but I kind of hoped to see something pretty spiffy underneath this uh, car cover because it was underneath the car cover. And this was going to be another 68 Camaro. So, hey, it could be lots of good stuff. 396, L78, whatever. But nope, this one looked like it needed everything. And, and the driver's side was just right next to the stair that went down the basement. That guy really knew where to step to keep from falling down in that basement. It was fairly incomplete too, as far as nothing under the hood. Or but, you know, these cars are pretty much rust free down here in Mexico, aren't they? Still all pretty exciting. I mean, all those chickens and roosters around making that noise and being where we were in Mexico, I mean, it was really classic, I thought. But to tell you the truth, I was about to say goodnight, Irene. Get out of there. Well, just okay. like, what were they saying in there about the cars? They were just talking about the cars being sentimental value. The white one that's all intact was given to him a long time ago, back in the 80s, by his old boss. And then that car was, he gave it to his son. His son passed away in 2012. And uh, the other two, he, you know, he'll probably get rid of the other two cars. The one that's completely disassembled and the one that's, that's rolling. But the other one is too sentimental for him to get rid of. The white one? The white one, yeah. Did he say what they were? Do uh, we know? He says the one that's all disassembled in the first garage is an RSSS 350. And uh, the one in the back is just a plain Camaro. But the white one is a Super Sport, an SS 350. So nothing here we really want, right? No, not really, but it's just kind of neat the way the cars are situated. The love is there for the cars and the addition, the uh, addiction to the cars. Say, see? Do you want to go to Florida? Okay. Where are we going now? Florida. He has a Kaiser. Ojalá que pueda. Es un tiene un Kaiser. Yeah, he might have a Kaiser Darren, but the first car we saw was this wrought iron Volkswagen that the chassis and body were apart. You can see the steering wheel and seats are made out of wrought iron, so is the body. This car's been this same shop for about 50 years. Chewy there had called Mr. Flores to see if he'd come down and show us the vehicle, so they let open the gates to the gallery there to let us in to wait on Flores. Right away, Michael spotted this Mustang pedal car, which he said was a Mexican version because the U.S. versions had embossed headlights. So that's a Mustang pedal car. And then Chewie walked over and said, hey, here's three more pedal cars. So, well, not a Kaiser Darren, but 
kind of interesting collectible stuff. I wondered what else was inside. So they took us inside the place and it was just full of antiques and handmade items. And we waited here and walked around the shop until Pepe Flores arrived. We love collecting. My, my grandfather started collecting uh, crucifixes. And then for some reason he just said, you know what? You gotta ring the doorbell, did you know? That? Yeah, that's funky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole idea. You know, nowadays you just walk up to the store and sometimes they don't even say hi. Here, they gotta come and open the door for you to make you feel welcome, because this is your house. This is this is not my business. This is your, mi casa, es tu casa. This, you know. So that it, it all right started here, from right us. Here. Right here is the name. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It says, "Welcome to Julia Ernestina." Please ring the doorbell. Here. You see all the all the birds on all the walls here, uh -huh. Mr. Heasley. See what what this is trying to tell you is that you gotta be free as a bird to do what you really love. If you don't do that, then you can be really good at it, but you ain't gonna be happy if you're free. So you gotta be free. If you gotta free. If you're free as a bird, then you'll be happy. So, a short guided tour before the wrought iron Volkswagen and the rest of the old cars. You see everything from, from tin stars, uh, carved, carved wooden mirrors, uh, real, real primitive artistic uh, things from the state of Michoacan, from the state of Jalisco, you know, woven uh, uh, beds, the, the headboards. The, look at this skull, how funky it is. You know, from really old stuff to real cool, funky stuff like, like this lamp. It's, it's a skull. I'm sure you can see the eyes and, you know, and, and all these lights. Uh, what else? Well, you know, the reproductions of the pedal cars. We have a collection of about 400 original ones, but this, these are the, the reproductions. And, and we just, you know, the sifones, you know, these for the bars. Look at look, with the with the wire. On them. That's that's what they used to use when Al Capone used to come to Juarez and have his drinks. Did you ever know that hmm. Juarez would have steam divorces? That would you could get married in the states, and if you did not want to be married anymore, you could just come across Juarez, and within an hour you could get divorced legally. Marilyn Monroe was here, uh, Clark Gable was here. So there's a lot of stories here in Juarez, okay? And that's what they look like, the real ones. Uh, what else? Well, look at these beauties. I probably sat on one of these at, at a time. This are PVC, you know, plastic made, the, probably the first plastic made horse, but you got something here from the 60s, uh, maybe maybe early 60s, late 50s, somewhere somewhere there. Uh, what else, what else? What's the most valuable piece in here? I don't think I could tell you that because there's two ways of looking at valuable. Something that really means a lot to you or something that's worth a lot of money. The Beatles? Yeah, the Beatles, this is, a, this is an old, uh, Hola, ¿cómo estás? Bien, gracias. This is an old uh, case, you know, so you could travel. It's it's even got some stamps over here. I don't know if your if your camera can can go ahead, yeah. but you'll you'll see the stamp right there of where it's traveled. What else? What else? There, there's a 1920s, 19. See, this is a metal one. I love these things. I mean, just the way you could, you know, look at that. See, so the kid would get on and then the legs would open like that. See? So the weight would, would make them open and close, open and close. And that's how you would, that's how you would advance. That thing really works. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Plus you gotta take care of this old bike. You know? I like that bike. Yeah, really that's, that's a repro. What is that? That's a repro. That's a reproduction. This is a, a My King. See? Mm -hmm. The Sky King was a was a reprodu it's a reproduction of an old my bike when when I, I believe it was the Second World War when they started making these bikes for the kids and the the, the ones that manufactured these bikes uh, back then were the, were the women that stayed home while the men were at war so they just became something you know these are the the globes that you set on top of the gas pumps. And we started reproducing this because people want to set them in their, in their houses with a base on them and just light it up and it, it looks really funky. A lot of horses and animals around here. Oh yeah, a lot of horses, a lot of animals. That's, that's a, you know, this is, this is a coin machine operated horse right here. You know, we, we yeah. saved whatever we could. Look at, look at the way it's, I mean, look at this piece. 
Nowadays, you'll never sign something that's, that's hand, even handwork. This is, this is probably a 40s, 1940s. You would put a coin and it was just rock. This is an original carousel horse from the early 1900s. Now, as you can see, why is it with this? Because I only found these pieces. And, and when my dad found these pieces, he said, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So one day, as you know, you know, we're artisans, I decided to, to assemble the rest with metal. So this is what we call arte moderno, modern art. Okay, so I assembled what my dad purchased from that 19, early 1900s wooden carousel horse and I just adapted the rest so it could be a whole. I did two of these. I don't know where the other one is, it has to be somewhere here. There's a lot of old bikes, you'll find a lot of old bikes. Yeah. We probably have about 50 or, or 60 you know, bikes from Schwinn, Cambridge's, uh, Campionolos, Rallies. You know, we just have like tons of bikes. Look at the mannequins over there, the zebras, uh, the, you know, those mannequins right there, there's, mm -hmm. I don't know, we're talking 1920s, 1930s at the latest. The headboard, that's probably also 1920s, 1930s. The Espacio de Escuela, that's a tin guy that would set up on schools back in the old days and they would just put them out on the street and that would mean that you had, had to slow down. You know, go. Let's go look at that. Well, it's amazing. That was probably in service for a long time. Yeah, it was. It was. So you would stick them to the ground and the cars just knew they had to slow down, you know. Walking around here just gives you a sort of a, I don't know what kind of, what I'd call that feeling. It's just a feeling of... I, I say what I, I a say... Calm or peaceness or something. It's, you know what it is? It's, it's the essence, okay? When, when you try and express someone or to a lot of people what's been going on throughout time and they can really see it and feel it and even sometimes smell it, then, then you're giving them something that they'll never get anywhere else. When you go to a museum, Mr. Heasley, you can just see a lot of beautiful pieces, a lot of, a lot of things that you will never be able to touch because the only the, the professionals or the experts can do that. Here, you can feel, you can touch, you can take pictures, you can do whatever you want. That's what it's about. You know, Mike Ramps, one of them, he was born in 1911, passed away about four years ago. Hell of a man, hell of a man. And he would tell me, uh, son, you know what? What's been going on the past 30 years I never lived in 70. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but you do have to remember this. Don't forget of where we come from. So this makes me feel like I have to keep going and keep collecting stuff so people know where they come from. A lot of people come here, Mr. Heans, and say, hey, you know what? I saw that in my grandma's barnyard, or I saw that in my grandpa's uh, little house, or I saw that in my uncle's hacienda. And, and you say, you know, people remember stuff thanks to what we have said here. So that, that it gives you an essence of, of what we're made out of. So it, it makes you feel good. That's, I hope that's what you feel, because that's what I feel. I tell my wife before I open the gallery, I come in one hour before anyone else. The workshops open up at seven. Uh, the people from the administration come in at eight, then we open to the public at 10. I get here about six, 6.15, and I walk around by myself, and I really enjoy it. You know, it makes me feel good to know that there's such a place, and I wish, that every city in the world had a place like this because it would just make them feel good. That's all it does. In the end of the day, I feel the same way. After everybody leaves, then I walk around by myself and I say, it was a good day again. Turn off the lights and I'll say, I'll see you tomorrow. Boy, that's... Now the, the Volkswagen out front. Oh, you want to go see that? Now that is something that's a car piece. <laughs> so for 30 years, meaning from the 1980s, the car stopped working and then two years ago I just decided that I wanted to I wanted to rebuild it so I started taking it apart and once I started taking it apart we noticed that there was a lot to be done so the first thing I had to find was an engine that would fit that model which is a 1961 after that you know it's just been something that I have to do so we're gonna go see the old VW unassembled and then I'm gonna show you a picture of what it looked like. And I don't have the draft of what it's gonna end up looking like, but I will send it to you. You're gonna really li like it. Now, this is the old trans right here, okay? That's the old engine. It's, it's all sealed. You're gonna see right here, 
See this, all the aluminum, it's all stuck now. That's the that's reason why on the cylinders, there was no way of making it work again. So we tried to make it work, but we just couldn't. In other words, this is an iron car. Tell us about what, what's the source of this car? I mean, did Volkswagen make it? Where did it come from? Is it a prototype? This is, is this it is a, a cutaway car? What? This is a really cool story. You're really going to enjoy this. I hope everyone else does. Um, my Gramps. Okay, go ahead. All right. My Gramps, uh, on my dad's side, he started this business of wrought iron. He was a, a nomad. He would he would go from here to over there, back and forth, just taking his family elsewhere so they could make some money somewhere. And 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 being a nomad, you know, he would work in agriculture. He would work uh, in a ranch. He would work this. He would work there. But one of his one of his uh, something really common was the way people would work metal as artisans. So he started working with us. He started he started liking it, and there was this huge demand. For the for the blacksmith and for the work that they would do with his hand forge in the U.S. So one day, what we call here in Mexico a compadre, meaning one of his best friends, was the manager of the Volkswagen company here in Juarez, which did really good back then. Okay, and he was well settled and everything. So he came up to my gramps one day and he said, Daniel, that was my grandfather's name. He said, I have a proposal to make and something that's gonna make you really sad and it's gonna give you a headache. And my gram said, it better be good. So he stuck his hand in his, in his coat and he, he brought out a postcard of a Volkswagen made out of metal, but just just the outer, the outer lining. And then my gram looked at it and said, what is this? He said, well, that's a real Volkswagen. And he said, where'd they make this? And he said, in Germany. And that's a prototype because that's how they're gonna make the bodies. In other words, they wouldn't work with clay back then. They would work with metal and then they would do the movements and everything, right? So my grandpa said, not good enough. He, and my grandfather said that he stuck a, a hand in his pocket and he pulled out a dollar bill and he said, bet you one dollar that I'll do better than that. So his compadre took his hand in his pocket, he pulled out a dollar bill and they called someone and they said, there's two dollars, let's bet that he'll do one. Three months, my, my gramps had a headache. Why? Because everybody took care of their Volkswagens back then. No one would get rid of them. So he could not find the engine, nor the transmission, nor the rest of, of the pieces that he needed for the Volkswagen. He knew what he had to make, meaning body type, but he didn't have the engine or the transmission or nothing. Finally, somebody had an accident and they said, that Volkswagen is totaled. My grandpa found out, he went and asked for the engine, he paid for it those three months became seven days so he got two artisans with him they started handcrafting the the VW and they had it made switched on the engine it started running he started driving it and they said that when he was driving up to the VW uh, you know store shop whatever it's called that one of the guys the salespeople ran into the office and he said Señora Redondo venga and he said I'm on the phone he said, venga rápido, meaning come quick. So he got startled and he hangs up and he starts running. And my grandpa was driving up to the VW. He drives up, he gets off, he hands out his hand and he goes, give me my dollar, compadre. And his compadre put his, money, his hand in the pocket again. He gave him out the, the dollar and he said, compadre, you really did it again. And after that, you know, this has been an icon in Juarez for the past 50 years. 30 years not working, we're gonna make it work next year. So 2019, you're gonna see this baby running again. All right, show us what we got. This is what we have, this is what we call alambron. Alambron is a metal round. No, this is this is round metal. You, you heat this up, Mr. Heasley, and you start working the ornaments, and they all have to be symmetrical, but it's all handmade. You know, you put them on in the fire, you use your hammers, you use your, 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 all your, your instruments, and you start making, and then you start welding. And then once you start welding, you start putting pieces together and you know where it's gonna go. Mark, okay. just briefly, what, what is this called? The wrought iron Volkswagen? The wrought iron Volkswagen, Volkswagen, we call it El Bocho de Herrería, which tr translated means the wrought iron Volkswagen. And it's been here forever. We've been on, on several magazines. 
Uh, we've been on the Motor Trends. We've been on National Inquirer. We've been on on the Hot Rod. We've been on on, on on various people take a picture of it, and then they would send it say this, and then they would comment it, and it was fun. They they never those magazines never came to Juarez and took a picture on their behalf. It was people that would drive by and see it and. and they would send it to them by mail back then not email because this was back in the 80s and then they would say how you know how is this happening I'll tell you this though you have to know this after this one there's probably about nine in the world but no one's done this one okay yes. I don't know if you can see that but that's this one back in the 70s okay and uh, then the seats are wrought iron and so is the steering wheel exactly as the hubcaps as the doors hubcaps are wrought iron yeah over here let me show you the hook pads right here and and they work oh yeah they're, they're structurally sound oh yeah and your grandfather made them that mean, makes this that that's a landmark of war is right yes it is it's probably a landmark for the state of chihuahua and i'm i'm gonna go ahead and say that it's probably a landmark for the whole country now he know? never thought that would happen no he didn't and he didn't did do it on that purpose he just wanted to show the world especially his best friend that we should have more trust in ourselves that's a good way to end. <laughs>